University of Illinois animal biology professor Christina Chang has spent two decades studying the fish that live in the icy, oxygen-rich waters of Antarctica. Her husband, animal biology professor Art DeVries, discovered in the late 1960s that these fish, called Antarctic notothenioids, actually manufacture their own antifreeze, a protein that latches onto ice crystals in the blood to prevent the fish from freezing. Today, Chang and her colleagues at the Chinese Academy of Sciences are looking at the genetic changes that allow these fish to survive in the harshest marine environment on the planet. They've found that certain genes are expressed at very high levels in the Antarctic fish. These genes code for proteins that protect their cells against environmental damage. Chris Chang describes the incredible variety of Antarctic notothenioids, which make up over 90% of the fish biomass of the Southern Ocean. The Antarctic Ocean is so cold that you wouldn't think that there would be many things living in it. And yet you have this group of fish that is so successful. And you know, if you take any fish from warmer waters and you plunk it into this Antarctic water, they will just instantly freeze and die. That's how extreme the environment is. So these fish were very successful because they could survive in this freezing environment and they have kind of like, you know, exploded and took up all the ecological niches in this wide open ocean and they diversify into different kinds of shapes, different kinds of um, morphology, different kinds of features that just by the look of them, they wouldn't be able to tell that they are really related. So there are about 100 plus species of these Antarctic fish that we call Antarctic notothenioids. There are five families of this group of fish, and almost all of them are bottom fishes. Most of them are sort of ambush predators. They sit around until food comes through and they lunge out and grab the food. So one family that we call nototheniidae is sort of more uh, ordinary looking fish that you see maybe in a pet shop. And that family actually has, is the most successful. It has 40 some species. Um, so D. mawsoni is the only species that grows to be very, very large in the Antarctic Ocean. The largest D. mawsoni that we've caught is about 200 pounds. So there are four other families. Most of them are not very big. Some of them are sort of streamlined and some of them have spines and some of them have barbells. I think one of the most striking looking fish is this group of ice fishes. They are so pale because they don't have any red blood cells that you can see through their skin and see through their bones and you can actually see the brain underneath the bone. There's another family called the dragonfish and they're called dragon because their head look kind of like the head of a dragon with a sort of elongated snout. One thing that we have found about the dragonfish is that in this very cold water, it takes the eggs about 10 months to develop and hatch. And that is an extremely, extremely long developmental time. The fish also grow very slowly after they hatch. So all of this sort of slow development and slow growth uh, means that if these fish are ever being fished commercially, uh, it's very difficult to replenish them. The fish that looks like they is uh, being frozen into ice is from McMurdo Sound. So McMurdo Sound is the southernmost limit of marine life in the Antarctic and is the coldest, the harshest environment, marine environment in the world. And there's lots and lots of this ice formation around in the shallow bottoms. And the fish actually loves these ice formation and they sort of sits inside these crevices, partly to forage. You know, there are other small invertebrates that live in these ice formations. So they go in there and look for food or they sit in there to avoid bigger fish from eating them. There are two other families the, that we call spiny plunder fish and that has little spines on the head. And then another family just called plunder fish, which has a very sort of interesting barbell at the lower lip 
And so the barbell generally in fishes are used to wave around in the water column for detecting whether there's food around, or it also creates curiosity for other fish who would come close to try to explore and become food. Theragramma antarcticum is in the family of Nodothiniidae, you know, just like Demosinae and T. bernachii are. And this is the only schooling fish out of the whole group. And it's a very, very important food source for seals and birds, penguins. So L. nudifron, T. bernachii, T. hansoni, D. mosoni are all species from different genera in the family Nodothiniidae. And they all have the same antifreeze protein. Most of the fish in this group are small species that are not commercially profitable to fish. Um, the biggest thing now is the fishing of the Antarctic toothfish or Desosticus mosini. It started about 10 years ago. And its sister species, Desosticus elucanoides or the Patagonia toothfish, has been fished since the 70s. And, and it's fetching extremely high prices in the U.S. market. And the Patagonia toothfish has been stock has been fished down substantially. New Zealand started uh, exploratory fishing of the Antarctic toothfish about eight or 10 years ago, and they found them north enough that uh, in the raw sea that they could catch them in large numbers. So the species is now therefore at peril as well because the fish is so lucrative in the fish market that not only New Zealand, there are many other countries that are fishing and there's a lot of illegal fishing as well. These fish, we have some estimate of their growth rate, and they grow very, very slowly. And they mature very late also. They are not sexually mature until they are about nine years old. But by that time, they are about 30, 40 pounds, a very, very catchable fish commercially. So there are about 100 plus species of these Antarctic notothenioids. They're very successful. They form about 90% of the fish biomass on the continental shelf, and they are food to birds and seals and whales. And so if the whole group goes away, then all of these other guys would be out of food and you know the whole ecosystem probably collapse. If, you, if the Antarctic toothfish itself is fished out, then the species probably could never come back because they grow so slowly and mature so late in life. So it is definitely going to do significant damage to, to the food web. And I, you know, I, I guess maybe people cannot relate to the loss of a single species. Um, but for, you know, biologists like myself who have studied these fish for a long, long time, I mean, uh, my opinion is that all creatures have equal rights to, uh, to, to inhabit this world, and we need to do everything we can as human beings with, you know, presumably the highest intelligence to preserve this planet that we live in. This is Diana Yates reporting for the University of Illinois News Bureau.